The story of the greatest da'i that lived in the time of a few generations after Adam alayhi salatu salam, which is Nuh alayhi salatu salam. The da'i that lived for more than a thousand years, of which 950 years he spent uh, calling to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the story of Nuh alayhi salatu salam, the story of one of the five top messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the way shirk started uh, was not by some people just waking up one day and deciding to worship idols. It was a gradual progression by which shirk came about in the ummah uh, of uh, Bani Adam. And the way it started was through righteous people. Uh, and when these righteous people died, people wanted to remember them. And because of that, they built statues, they built pictures. And then based upon this, uh, they started to feel very sad and lonely after these people passed away and then of course the shaitan came to these people and then to their children and their progeny and told them that your parents used to worship these people so worship them so that is Al-Wad and Su'a and Ya'uth and Ya'uq and Nasr these were the five idols of the time of Nuh alayhi salam that later on became to be worshipped by the Jazirat al-Arab as well this is a story of Nuh والسلام, that was revealed to the Prophet وسلم, in the Meccan period. In the Meccan period, the Prophet وسلم, went through tremendous trials and tribulations. So at every step of the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him and helped him through the most difficult times of being a da'i. Some of the scholars said that this story of Nuh والسلام, was revealed on, in those three years when the Prophet وسلم, was banished from Mecca. If you feel that you're going through difficulty, here is a story of someone who had more difficulty than what you had, which is for 950 years, this poor man was being mocked at, jeered at, uh, and cursed at. Never did he make dua against his people, except after Allah told him and revealed to him that those who have believed have already believed, no one else will ever believe after you. So come, let's start with Surah Nuh and learn about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in this beautiful surah about the story of our beloved Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu salam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful to all beings, Ar Rahman, meaning the one who is merciful to everything in existence that, that you can see and that you cannot see, that you know of and that you don't know of as well, both Muslim and non Muslim, the one who is merciful to everything in existence, Ar Rahim, the one who is merciful specifically to, to the believers only. Indeed, we sent Nuhan to, to his people, ila qawmihi. Very important, ikhwati. The da'i calls his people by his people. You are my people, even if they're non-believers. An anzir qawmaka. In order to warn your people. Min qabili, before. An yatiyahum adabun alim. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned in the authentic tafsir. He said that for about 10 generations after the death of Adam alayhi salam, the people were upon Tawheed. However, towards the ninth and 10th generation, the people who were very righteous began to die and people felt sorry for them. And they started to build mausoleums and statues and pictures of them. And then of course, Shaitan came to them and said, worship them. That is how shirk entered upon them. And that is at that point that Nuh alayhi salam was sent uh, to these people. Qala ya qawmi. He is associating himself that I am from you. So I have the same issues on my mind. I understand your problems. I understand your concerns. I understand your background. So I am from you. Verily, O my people, I am a manifest warner to you all. <clears throat> that you should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear him and obey him. Meaning worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means avoiding that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to avoid and ati'u meaning to do that which he has commanded you to do. That is the essence of worship. Yaghfir lakum, if you do that, Allah will forgive you. Yaghfir lakum min dunubikum. Yani he will forgive some of your sins, meaning he will forgive from your sins. 
وَيُؤَخِّرُكُمْ And He will give you respite إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Until an appointed time. What is an appointed time? It is your death. إِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ Verily when the time of Allah comes, لا يؤخر It cannot ever be stopped. لَوْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If only you knew. So we know that therefore the time of a death can never be changed. How do we understand this? Well, we understand that there is an ultimate qadr, which is the qadr in lawh al-mahfuz. That is something that will never change. However, there are other qadr as well. The other types of qadr that are there are the, is, the, is the daily qadr, is the yearly qadr. These are all the qadrs that can be changed. The yearly qadr is the qadr that is revealed on Laylatul Qadr. The yearly qadr for the next year is revealed. The daily qadr is the qadr that comes down at Asr and at, at Fajr where the angels are told what will happen to you in the next uh, uh, 12 hours when they interchange. Uh, lifelong Qadr is the Qadr that the angel writes down when he is in the womb. After 120 days, he writes down. So is he going to be happy or sad? Is he going to uh, be a Muslim or non-Muslim, etc.? That is a lifelong Qadr. So these are the three Qadrs that can change according to uh, Imam Al-Tahawi in his Aqeedah Tahawiyyah. Indeed, when the time of Allah comes, it can never be stopped if only you knew. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes Nuh as he makes dua to Allah at the depths of the night. Qala Rabbi, he says, O oh my Lord, inni da'atu qawmi layla wa nahara. Verily, O oh my Lord, I called my people in the morning and the night. This is why I never judge people according to outcomes. Outcomes are up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Results are up to Allah. But rather, uh, what we know is the persistence of Nuh was enough for the people of the earth to accept Islam. فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي Meaning calling upon them did not increase them in anything except firara, Meaning except running away from me. وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعَوْتُهُمْ And this, despite them running away, كُلَّمَا دَعَوْتُهُمْ I persisted on calling them. لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ So that you might forgive them. جَعَلُوا What did they do? أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ Meaning they didn't want to listen to me at all, so much so that when they saw me there, they would put their fingers in their ears like this, so they couldn't hear me at all. وَاسْتَغْشَوْ ثِيَابَهُمْ To actually take your thawb and to put it all over you, meaning you don't want them to be recognized or you don't want to see them. وَاسْتَغْشَوْ ثِيَابَهُمْ They turned their face away, they covered their face with their cloth. وَأَصَرُّوا And they persisted in their arrogance. وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا stikbara, And they continued in their pride with a huge amount of pride and istikbar and arrogance. ثُمَّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُهُمْ jihara. Then I called them publicly. Publicly I would stand in the markets and I would call out to them. I would stand on the minarets, I would call out to them. I would go up to their most busiest of places, I would call to them. ثُمَّ إِنِّي أَعْلَنْتُ لَهُمْ وَأَسْرَتُ لَهُمْ إِسْرَارًا Then I called out to them and I said, whoever wants to meet me one on one, Come and see me here. And then I met them secretly, meaning one on one as well. It is mentioned that when Nuh alayhi salatu salam used to call his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people used to pass by and uh, they used to say, don't listen to him. He's a, he's a joker. He's a, he's a, a soothsayer. He's a magician. And then the people would grow old and they would have children. And they would have children, the children would have children, and the grandfather and the son and the grandson would all come together, all three of them. And they would all say, don't listen to this man. You know, all three generations of people would come past this Nuh salam, as he was calling them patiently, believe in Allah, you know, have repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, salam. Amazing. He told them publicly. He told them where to meet him. He called out to them. He did every single thing possible. Why was he so persistent? Because he loved his people. Today, we fail to call to the da'wah because our love for our people is deficient. What was the essence of my, my speech to them? فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا I told them, the essence of my, my speech with them was please accept Islam. Please repent to Allah. إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to forgive the equity repentance is beautiful it will ennoble you allah will give you rewards allah will forgive you allah will love you allah will care for you allah will give you everything your heart's desire if you simply repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's look at what nuh salam said are the benefits of repenting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in verse number 11 in surah nuh 
يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارَ Meaning, repent to Allah. He will send you the clouds laden with rain again and again and again. وَيُمْدِدِكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِ He will give you more wealth. Meaning, repenting to Allah will make you rich. وَبَنِينَ He will give you more children. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتِ And He will give you rivers from which to cultivate your crops. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارَ And He will give you so much ponds and lakes from which to cultivate and feed your crops from. And that is why Al-Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he said, O oh, young men and young women, work for the Akhirah. For verily I have seen in my life that anyone who works for the Akhirah, Allah also gives him the dunya. Tawbah is another, another example. The Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith in Abu Dawood, nothing stops the wealth that Allah has written for you from coming to you except your sins. Also, if you're, if you're struggling to have a baby, istighfar, istighfar, istighfar. Because that's what Nuh said. And he'll give you children. Subhanallah. What is wrong with you that you do not seek a means of safety from Allah's punishment by repenting to Him, by praying to Him, by giving charity? What's wrong with you? Whilst He has created you, atwar, atwar meaning in levels. We were nutfa, then alaqa, then mudgha, then we became a human being. And the soul was blown into us. Then we were an infant, then a child, then we were a teenager, then we became an adult. After that we become an old man and then a frail old person and then we die. Or he gave us death, then he gave us life, then he'll give us death, then he'll give us life again. Alam tarau kayfa khalaq Allahu sab'a samawatin tibaqa. Have you not seen how Allah has created the seven heavens? All above you towering. وَجَعَلَ الْقَمَرَ فِيهِنَّ نُورًا And he has put the qamar within it, a light, something that emits light. وَجَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ سِرَاجَ And he has made the shams, a sun, something that emits the light. So this is a miracle of the Qur'an, that the Qur'an told us from early on that the moon is a reflector, whereas the sun is an emitter of light, yeah? Because of the particular words that have been used. So the moon is called nur, whereas the shams is called the siraj. وَاللَّهُ أَنْبَتَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ نَبَاتًا Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused you to grow from the earth just like He caused the crops to grow from the earth as well. Meaning He recreated you just like He created all other uh, creations from the earth as well. ثُمَّ يُعِيدُكُمْ فِيهَا وَيُخْرِجُكُمْ إِخْرَاجًا Then He will cause you to be returned therein. Then He will cause you to come up again. وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ بِسَاطًا Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the earth white, white spread out, soft and gentle so you can, you can run on it. Have you seen the rough barren lands? You couldn't have done anything on it if the earth was barren and rough. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it soft and easy for us to do so. Wallahu ja'ala lakum arda bisata. He made the earth wide outstretched so you can live on it, live on it and travel in it. لِتَسْلُكُوا مِنْهَا سُبُلًا فِي جَاجًا So that you may take therein, hearts therein, to travel therein. Ya'ikhwati, these are all signs of Allah. Mountains, the paths, the, uh, the oceans, the sky, the food, the water, every single thing are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ إِنَّهُمْ عَصَوْنِي After 950 years, he makes this dua. إِنَّهُمْ عَصَوْنِي وَاتَّبَعُوا مَنْ لَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ Oh Allah, they have not listened to me. They have decided to reject me. And they have decided to follow those who their wealth and their children have not increased them in anything except khasara, except misguidance. Meaning, what causes people today to become misguided? What causes them to become misguided is that they have wealth and children. Simple. The arrogant people today, they think they are strong and big and haughty and proud because they have wealth and they have children. So my brothers and sisters of Islam, do not be uh, deceived by your wealth and the fact that you have kids. And they have mocked me with a severe mocking. And they said, Do not leave alihatakum, your gods. وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ And do not dare leave. وَدَّنْ وَلَا سُعَى وَلَا يَغُوثْ وَلَا يَعُوقْ وَلَا نَصْرَى The five gods that they mentioned. Don't leave your gods and especially these five gods, don't leave them at all. In the authentic narration which is in Bukhari, at the time of the death of the Prophet 
Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha mentioned a hadith. She said that when the Prophet ﷺ was on his deathbed and he was going through the pains of his death, then a person came from the travels from Ethiopia and he mentioned about these beautiful palaces and these beautiful churches that he saw in Ethiopia. Uh, and when the Prophet ﷺ saw, uh, heard that, he said, Verily, those people are the worst of creation. Though they, when a righteous person dies amongst them, they make a mausoleum over their dead body and then they make it into a place of worship. Indeed, they have misguided so many people. Wala zalimina illa dalala. Oh Allah, do not increase the zalimin except dalala. When someone sins, do not increase him in anything except more sin. Meaning, you must, as soon as you sin, stop it immediately or repent and stop the cycle. Because if you continue on and don't repent, you will fall into another sin, which will lead you into another sin, which will lead into another one. Mimma khati'atihim, because of their sins. Ughriku, they were all drowned. Wa udkhilu nara, and they were entered the fire. Meaning, they were entered the fire of, not of Jahannam, but of the grave. So the fire and the punishment of the grave is true. This is a proof, and you must protect yourselves from it. So, of course, at that point, the command came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and told him to create the fulk. The scholars of tafsir did not mention just like the Judeo-Christian view of the plank was that the Judeo-Christian view of the plank was that it was actually a boat. And in it, Nuh alayhi salam and all the, uh, all the believers and also all the animals and uh, wild creatures and everything went in there, one or two of each. This is the Judeo-Christian view, not the Islamic view. The Islamic view was not necessarily that the whole earth was drowned. That is not the Islamic view. The Islamic view was that where Nuh alayhi salam was, which is around the Black Sea, around the Black Sea, around Mesopotamia, this is where, uh, where Nuh alayhi salam was, and that is the place that was actually drowned, uh, and that had a huge uh, amount of uh, flooding until the scholars of Tafsir mentioned uh, that the water had reached the level of about 15 meters above the highest peak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best whether it was actually a, a proper ship or not for which then Nuh alayhi uh, salam ordered his people to be on. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what the reality is. But what we do know is that the whole region was flooded and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed everyone including one of the sons of Nuh alayhi salam including his wife as well. They did not believe in Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. فَلَمْ يَجِدُوا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنصَارًا So they did not find anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an Ansar with them. وَقَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ And Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam said, O my Lord, لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا O Allah, do not leave upon the earth, from the disbelievers, dayyara, not even a single person. إِنَّكَ إِن تَذَرْهُمْ يُضِلُّ عِبَادَكَ If you leave them, they will misguide your slaves. وَلَا يَلِدُوا إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَّارًا And they will not give birth to anyone except a fajr, a arrogant sinner who will sin against you, O Allah. So the dua of Nuh والسلام, after he was told that no one else would believe on this earth is that he made a dua against all the disbelievers. And the dua of the prophets is acceptable. Yekhwati, I have a question for you before I, I go to the last verse of that surah. Why is it that today so many nations disbelieve in Allah but they are not being destroyed? All the natural disasters are coming to Muslim world. Why is it? Because we don't do the work of the prophets. We don't call people to Islam anymore. I mean, how many Islamic universities are there worldwide? How many of them are actually doing the our work? Where is the calling people to Islam? We must do our jobs, otherwise we will also be drowned. Then finally, Nuh alayhi salatu salam finishes off and he says, Rabbi ghfir li, O Allah forgive me. Wali wali dayya, wali man dakhala baytiya mu'minan walil mu'minina wal mu'minat. So first forgive me, then my parents who have the most right upon me, and then my guests who have the most right upon me, and then of course my believing brothers and sisters who have the most right upon me. Can you see how he has made dua? Wala tazidi dhalimina illa tabara. And do not increase the dhalimin, the wrongdoers, except in misguidance and arrogance and destruction in this dunya. Zakhmul khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.